The Lord be with you. you. Wonderful to see everybody here. Wonderful to have you joining us as we're streaming live on Facebook. Uh, If you would like to download the order of service, uh, there's a link right there with the Facebook live feed. Click on that. It'll take you right to the order of worship for today. Our uh, opening hymn printed there in front of you. It's 976 in Lutheran service book. Uh, Give me Jesus. Let us run. Oh, one more thing. Thank you, Joe Kaiser, for playing that Takata for us. Wonderful job. Thank you.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your, your beloved Son, Son Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. <clears throat> Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. Glory, Glory be to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Reading from the first book of Moses, the book of Genesis, the 50th chapter. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. From the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, the first chapter. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs>
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. And so they went. And going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and he found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? And he said to him, Because no one has hired us. And he said to them, Go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last works, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us? who have bore the burden of the day and the scorching heat? But he replied to one of them, Friend, am I doing you no wrong? Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity, so the last will be first, and the first last? This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The parable which we heard this morning is not a parable about works. It's a parable about grace. There's a very vast difference between these two things. Both are good. And both have their place. Only they have different perspectives. When the workers who were hired last came to receive their wages for the day, and they received a denarius, one full day's wages, they were greatly surprised, and they truly knew what it meant to know grace, to receive something that was undeserved. For the wages that they had received were the graciousness of the master of the vineyard, who gave to them out of his generosity, and they received with great thanksgiving. So now when it came to the workers that were hired first, they thought, surely, as the ones that were hired last received a denarius, they would receive at least two or maybe even three denarius, two to three days' worth of work. Hey. And when the master of the vineyard takes and gives them a denarius, they do not look at it in the sign of grace, of mercy and love. But they look at it from the sign of work, and they begin to grumble and complain and become very bitter about it. Didn't they get what was owed to them? What had been agreed at the very beginning when they were hired? Didn't they get what was truly to be given unto them? Or did they? Did they deserve anything at all? You see, when you begin to look at works and think that there is a reward for your works, how can you judge that? How can you know that you have worked hard enough? That you have done the job perfectly? That you have completed it? You can't. And so when you receive something, you begin to grumble and complain. Just as these that were hired first. They wanted more. They felt they deserved more. And doesn't this happen in our world today? Take a look at athletes. Okay, we're in the baseball and football season. And as they take and have negotiated their salaries for this year and work, they are ecstatic that they are making multi-million dollars. But then, when a new young person is hired and suddenly is making more than them for less time in that contract, those that had made an agreement begin to grumble and complain and try to renegotiate. They feel that they deserve more. They've been gypped. They've been cheated. And so they want to take and get the fullness of what they think is owed to them. Or what about a child? When it comes to their birthday or to Christmas and they receive a gift, they are so joyful that they got exactly what they had asked for. But then suddenly, they begin to compare and 
themselves to those that are around them, to their friends. And when they find that their friends have received something that is better than what they received, a newer model, a better extension to it, more games to the game station, they begin to grumble and complain and say, we deserve more. We want more. And they are not satisfied. It's not fair, they say. You know, the same is true for each and every one of us. Most of us have been blessed with abundance. But then at times when we start looking at others, at their families, at their possessions, at the love that takes place in those families, we begin to be like the first workers and grumble and complain. Why is it that God gives to those poor, miserable people out there that don't even believe in him blessings here on earth? When we come to church or watch on streaming each and every week, why is it that God doesn't give us more? Don't we deserve more? But then recall, the master of the vineyard paid what was appropriate. And he did it not to teach them something about work and work ethics, but to teach them about ourselves. To teach them about himself and about his grace, his mercy, and his love. So what can we learn about ourselves from this parable? Unfortunately, it's not pretty. A parable like this reveals and draws out the sin that lives and dwells within each and every one of us. That sin that we try to hide deep down in our soul and heart. It's the sin that we are often dissatisfied with God and how he chooses to distribute things within this world. That we are often jealous of our friends and our neighbors and in competition with them. A competition that is not good because we will do anything to be the winner. Oh, sure, we know that we should love God above all things. But that's not often true, is it? Many times we put people and possessions above our God. So the sin in us turns the goodness of God into something that's not good. And not because he wasn't good to us or that he didn't give us enough, but simply because someone else has gotten more. It's not pretty, is it? When we look inside ourselves and see what we really are like, when we look deep down past the good show that we put on, for society, for our friends, for the people around us. So it's good that we are here today, that we repent, that we let go of this sin and that we ask God not only to forgive us, but also that we might change. And not only be happy, but truly be happy for what others have received, but even more importantly, that we might love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind, and not be angry with him for giving to others, 
but be thankful for what he has given us. Because what he has given us is truly a blessing. A blessing that we don't deserve. And that's the key, that's the basis for our relationship with God that we must know that he gives to us not what we deserve, but of his grace and mercy. <clears throat> because what we truly deserve is punishment. We truly deserve eternal condemnation, separation from God, being cut off from the family of God, but that is not what he does. He's a master that is gracious and generous. And he loves to give. And so he gives to us not only what we need for this body and this life, but even more. He gives to us eternal life, forgiveness of our sins, and salvation. And that cost a great price. You see, he who had everything, the very Son of God who sat upon the throne of heaven, humbled himself to take on our very nature. To take what we truly deserve. Separation from God. Death, punishment of sin. And that's what the very Son of God took upon himself so that we would not receive that, so we would not receive what we truly deserve, but instead receive the grace, mercy, and peace of a loving Father who gives abundantly to us. You see, we are the ones that have been hired last. We have received a full reward. The full blessings of forgiveness of all of our sins. You see, we have received the gift of eternal life through faith in him. Not because we deserve it. because of his great love for us. And shouldn't the master be able to do with what is his as he desires? And his desire is to share that with all people of all times and all places. And so for this, we who have been hired last at the end, who have worked little, receive much. We who are last become the first because the Son of God became last. That's grace. That's your God who can't help but to give to you. That's a God that continues to give. Not what we deserve, but of his blessings. God continues to bless us. And for this, we need to be thankful and not turn ourselves into the ones that grumble and complain. And say, why is it that others receive when they have not been as good as us or done what we have done? Because then we have turned it upside down. So thankfully, our Father gives to us of his grace, of his mercy, and his peace. Thankfully, our God gives to us what we do not deserve. He gives us forgiveness of all of our sins. 
for this. We need not look around at those around us, but look at ourselves. And we don't have to dig very, very deep, for if we are honest at the surface, we can see that every thought, every word, every deed is filled with sin. But thanks be to God that he has brought us to the font of baptism and washed away every one of those sins. Thanks be to God that he takes and brings us to his holy altar to receive that precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was offered upon the tree of the cross, granting us forgiveness. Total, complete, 100% forgiveness. Thanks be to God that he is gracious, that he is loving, and that he is forgiving. And that, my dear friends, is your God, who loves to give. Receive his blessings and thanksgiving. Receive the gift of forgiveness and salvation in him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. In the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. seated is at this time we ask Dawn to give us our stewardship thought for this month. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Last month we talked about how we can affect individuals by reaching out to them in tangible ways. We could call this personal stewardship. Today we'd like to spend a few moments on corporate stewardship how we can assist Trinity and other mission outreach efforts. We certainly live in unprecedented times in terms of what is or what is not going on in our church as a result of the COVID pandemic. There are no plans or sign up forms for helping with such favorites as fall, fall favorites as German dinner, Oktoberfest, or craft fair. Spending time in our day school, classrooms, reading to our younger students is currently not an option. Either is being in a classroom, a lunchroom helper, so how can we serve? First of all, pray to the Lord for his guidance in this area, letting him speak to you with his plans for you. Next, seek out our staff with offers to help and ask them to suggest ways that you can serve and look for the ways that we can serve our communities at this time when so many are hurting for a variety of reasons. Here are just a few specific items, ideas. With the demands of sanitizing and cleaning, especially our classrooms and common areas, our custodian can use help to ensure the continued safety of our campus. Our food pantry is always looking for people to help, especially in this time of harvesting produce. Our script program is looking for individuals to assist with recording 
and promotion. Keep your eyes open for community outreach, outreach opportunities. Spend time applying for a Thrivent Action Team Grant to assist one of the many needs that COVID has, has necessitated. Many of these items can be done within your personal comfort level for social distancing, etc. Many good ideas never get to the finish line because we do not act on them. Let us ask our Lord for boldness in stepping out to serve him corporately in our church and in our community. Please contact Steve Ranke in the Trinity's offices to talk further about when, where your sense of God is leaving, leading you. Remember, no act of service is too small when done for the glory of your Lord and Savior. Thanks and have a blessed day in the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. I invite you to please stand and join in the prayer of the church. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord and offer to him the petitions and the supplications of a people that are confident of his promise to hear and answer us with mercy. That we may seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him in the day of salvation and be prepared by his mercy for the day of judgment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may delight in the light of Christ in his salvation, and that sinners may find refuge in his mercy and comfort in his forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may hear the voice of God speaking in his word and be nurtured by faithful by faithful pastors who will preach and teach this gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That this word may be the foundation of the home, that husband and wife may be united in this faith and hope, and that their children may hear and be nurtured in this word by faithful parents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those that celebrate anniversaries this week, in thanksgiving for the blessings of life together as husband and wife, we thank you, O Lord, for Ron and Dottie Krauss and their marriage to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the church may be blessed through missionaries both far and near, that we may be nurtured in the faith by word and sacrament, that newly planted congregations may flourish, and that God would renew those congregations that are in distress, that those from every nation and culture may be united with us in faith and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may enjoy the blessings of good government, of faithful leaders, of peace in our land, and peace among the nations. That we may be good citizens and neighbors to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the gift of life, especially for those that celebrate birthdays this week, for Johanna Siski, Valerie Giroux, Lois Baldoff, Cindy Deesh, Dennis Durkee, Lisa Rhodes, Deb Monteufel, Carla Watson, Justin Cobes, Jared Bursack, Axel Hurst, Owen Voigt, and Craig Wusaw, that they continue to give thanks to you for the blessing of life, especially as life as your dear children. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the sick may be healed and that the troubled may know peace. That the grieving might be comfort and that the dying may be delivered to everlasting life in Christ. Especially we lift up before you. Mary Voigt, Karen Beard, Patrick Waglin, the family of Sylvia Borchardt, who was called to her eternal rest, Roy Mel, the Reverend Marvin Alborn, Laverne Worth, Donna Meese, Carrie Hine, Roman Brockman, Kathy Rigatti, Diane Olson, Alan Monteufel, Luke and Marilee Weingard, Shirley Fleischer, George Olruby, Don Mater, Ann Keller, Mark Becker, Roman Tarenko, Scott Donji, Scott Steenfort, Tom Howden and family, Lynn Olson, Norm Pomeranke, Barbara Thomas, Mona Barkey, Lee Weinig, Rose Kozlowski, Roger Kemp, Joan Reinke, Tom Drum, Merle Weber, Sandy Seahawk, Ann Enderly, Oliver Siegel, Todd Bricko, Jeff Dion, Mary Ann Hollister, and Laurel Worth, and that we may all be delivered from fear, anxiety, and despair by God's gracious care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may commune in faith and that no unrepentant sin may hinder our reception of Christ's body and blood, and that the fruits of this communion may be reflected in a manner of life in keeping with who we are as God's dear children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may honor the Lord with praise and thanksgiving and bring to the Lord the tithes, the offerings of grateful people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear the prayers of your people, O Lord, and grant to us all things that are good and wholesome and keep us from those things that are harmful. Give us contentment that trusting in your mercy we may delight in your saving will where the last are made first by your generosity and grace through jesus christ your son our lord amen, amen. our father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be thy name, name. Thy, thy kingdom come thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven, heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving, loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you've given us pardon and peace in your sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. 
Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. this would be our weekend that we have rally day. Unfortunately, because of all the things that are going on, we do not have a balloon launch this year. We don't have an activity after church. We don't have a big meal for all of us to gather. But you know, thanks be to God that there are some things that do not change. And that is the word of God and the opportunity for us to be in the Word of God. I want to remind you of some opportunities that are available to be in the Word of God. Beginning this morning and ongoing, we will be having a study that is teaching the faith, a review and renewal of what God teaches us through the Holy Scriptures. If you've had questions about what are the Scriptures, what about God's law and creation, what about salvation, the Trinity, what about God himself, what about confession and the sacraments? Do you have questions that you've been afraid to ask, but you really have burning on your heart and mind? This is the study for you. An opportunity to refresh what you were taught in catechism. And for those of you that have been attending church that want to know a little bit more about the Lutheran Christian faith. For those of you that have been watching us at home. For those that are families of our school. On Sunday mornings from 1030 till 1130, we will have the opportunity to study and to see what God's Word has for us. Beginning the middle of October, our Sunday school will be starting back up. What a great opportunity to bring the little ones to hear and receive the Word of God, to continue to grow in the knowledge of what the Scriptures have to say. We have men's studies and women's studies and couple's studies and uh, Pastor Aliyah's Sunday morning study that is being uh, Zoomed, that there are countless opportunities. Please watch the bulletin for more information as to where and how you might be able to join in with some of these opportunities and pray that the Lord might be able to use you to Grow in your faith, your knowledge, and love for him as you study his word. Pastor, you have anything else this morning? You covered it. Okay, well then, let's conclude by singing our final hymn. Hymn number 712, Seek Ye First. 712. 